What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video which is the Chelsea News video where I will be discussing Chelsea's feel good factor at Stamford Bridge, how there's a better feeling there now more than ever or certainly a long time, yet Chelsea aren't necessarily getting the results. Why is Christian Pulisic not playing for Frank Lampard? What's going on there? £58 million for the young American star? What's the deal? And finally, new youth inclusions and players that might play in the cup game tonight and also may be included around the squad moving forwards. Before we do get into today's content, a quick reminder that I'd like you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and make sure you hit the bell notifications icon because I upload daily, there's loads of content. I want you, yes you, to keep up with the content, so please do subscribe and like the video if you want to do me a favour. Alright, let's start with potential youth inclusions for the Carabao Cup game against Grimsby Town. Firstly, the two superstar returnees that everyone will be waiting on, Callum Hudson-Odoi and Reese James could both feature in this game. If not for 90 minutes, certainly 60 minutes or get subbed on. They're both returning from injury, they've both been training with the first team and they've both played some development squad games so maybe it's the right time for them to be reintegrated and reintroduced into Frank Lampard's squad. Frank Lampard wants his players to constantly run, constantly press, know where to run and when, essentially high octane, high energy football and he he won't put you into the Premier League side until he thinks you're ready, regardless to talent. But there could be more inclusions in this game. Young centre-back Mark Gehi could be a player that could feature. Mark has been training with Chelsea's first team squad. And remember, Frank Lampard, Joe Edwards, Jody Morris, these players will be watching all the youth at Chelsea, all the young players in the academy and the young players in Chelsea's ranks. He's certainly a good performer and could feature. Another really, really exciting one is Ian Mattson, the left back, a young 17 year old player. Very, very highly rated indeed and with Emerson Palmieri's injury and if Frank Lampard wants to play a conventional left back in a 4-3-3, maybe Marcus Alonso isn't the answer here. Maybe he does bring an Ian to play and that would be really, really exciting to see. And of course, another player who's played in pre-season has really impressed the coaches and has actually already made his Premier League debut and that is young Billy Gilmore. Very, very talented and technical young footballer, sort of playmaker, attacking midfielder but can play deep and dictate. The only thing for me is he's quite slight, he's a very small guy, very much needs to fill out but this is the perfect game for him. He's a very exciting young player and he could absolutely feature. And to be honest, I think Chelsea fans could feel disappointed if he doesn't feature in this game. Next up, the feel good factor at the bridge. Frank Lampard has recently commented on how he knows how smart Chelsea fans will understand the situation at Stamford Bridge. But the truth is, broadcasters, TV football personalities, media outlets, journalists, everyone's commented on how it's not so much a free hit for Frank Lampard this season, but you know, there's the transfer ban, there's the new style of football, there's bringing in the youth, there's the lack of Eden Hazard, there's the general competition at the higher echelons of the table in terms of Liverpool and City. People aren't expecting the world from Chelsea, they're just expecting a direction, an identity, and you know what? That seems to be prevalent in this current Chelsea side. Chelsea fans and non-Chelsea fans alike understand what's happening at Stamford Bridge, and there's an incredibly palpable feel-good factor among the fan base. After Chelsea's 2-1 loss to Liverpool, the Chelsea players were applauded off the pitch. Now, think about that. Over the last, say, 10-15 years, Chelsea versus Liverpool has been a huge game. Chelsea have been much more successful in the Premier League than Liverpool in the Premier League era, obviously. If Chelsea lost at home to Liverpool, it would be a really, not toxic, but negative feeling. And I guess it was a good performance in that game, so in days of old there might have been a shrug and leave, but it was actually a really positive, palpable feeling. The team, the coach, got applauded off the pitch, and suddenly things are feeling a little bit different. Now, I'm not saying this is a new thing at Stamford Bridge, but it's certainly not been there for a while. If you think about recent coaches, obviously there was a feel-good factor with Antonio Conte, certainly in his first season, but that's because they were walking the Premier League. If you look at people like Sarri, who's a good coach, but hadn't ideology a philosophy and Chelsea did pretty well under him if you look at the sort of tangible results but there was no feel-good factor in the Tampered Bridge in the fan base certainly not the entire fan base basically what Frank Lampard is doing at Chelsea he's been dealt a really difficult hand he's an inexperienced coach himself 
but he personifies what has made Chelsea great throughout the last 20 years and he's basically leading the ship now so that is being recognised by the Chelsea fans and is an incredibly exciting prospect in itself but obviously he's the man to finally bring through this world class academy's products. For too long has the world critiqued Chelsea for developing some of the world's best young footballers yet not integrating them into the first team. And now it's happening courtesy of Chelsea's greatest ever player in Frank Lampard. Frank has responded well to the positive reaction of the Chelsea fans but understands what it means to be Chelsea and obviously wants to win. He knows there's a standard and won't accept mediocrity but he wants patience from the fans and indeed the media and he's getting that. An interesting thing will be to see if he does bring in big money signings when he gets the chance because when he touched down at Chelsea same as Antonio Conte, same as Maurizio Sarri, he said, not interested in signings, I'm happy with this squad. But like all managers, even Frank Lampard has started talking about how maybe he would have liked to bring some people in, but he w wasn't able to because of the transfer ban. So that will be an interesting one to see what happens, but for the meantime, he's got a style, he's got an ethos, he's got a philosophy in playing high press, high octane direct football, but with a pragmatic approach in terms of adaptability, formations, changing shape in the middle of the game, using different personnel. And he's learning on the job himself. I think there's a little bit of understanding there as well, how he is an inexperienced manager, but he's got the right ideas and he's got the right staff around him in his assistant coaches and Petr Cech as well above him. The band is back together. There is a feel good factor. And with that has come great patience and a happy feeling around Stamford Bridge. And it kind of has been a while since that's happened. Like I said, to reiterate, when the fans were applauding the team and the coach off the pitch after a 2-1 home loss to Liverpool, you know there is a good feeling around the club. Right, and let's get on to the third story for today's video. Why is Chelsea's big money signing in Christian Pulisic not playing for Chelsea? Now, this is an interesting one. I rate Pulisic incredibly highly. Fair enough, he might not have a huge offensive output, but I am a stern believer that's something that he can develop and he's a very creative player. The big shock for me is when he didn't play against Liverpool because he was so good in the Super Cup in running in behind and indeed pre-season as well. He d demonstrated that ability so, so well in running in behind when he scored those two goals. So there was a few things to consider here. Firstly, I think he's probably taking some time to embed into English football and Frank Lampard's football. It's very quick, it's very direct. He needs to develop a chemistry with his teammates on the pitch. I think he would be a useful weapon and had things gone differently so far this season, we would have probably seen him a bit more. Now that's not a slight on him in training or his fitness levels or him emotionally bedding into the new league and country. I feel like if Chelsea were doing better in certain games, he would have come on, stuff like that. But also what I think a huge factor is, I feel he's a victim of circumstance. He's not Frank Lampard signing, and obviously Mason Mount has been a bit of a revelation in terms of his inclusion to this Chelsea squad and getting his England call up and playing well and training well for England, and he's basically impressed the Premier League. Mount is a much more threatening player in terms of offensive numbers, and he's not even a winger really, he's an attacking midfielder. But more importantly to that, there's two factors that kind of keep him in front of Pulisic in the pecking order for the moment. The first will be he knows Frank Lampard's system. He's played under Frank Lampard for over a year now and he knows exactly what he wants out of his players and he knows what movements to make and he's incredibly intelligent. Mason Mount's been studying Frank Lampard's football all his life at the academy. They used to show him videos of Frank Lampard as he was sort of growing up through the ranks and he knows the movements and therefore he's sort of more in tune with Frank Lampard's football inherently. But as I said, he played under him at Derby and he knows all his tactical instructions down to a T already. The second thing to know would be, for example, his relationship with Tammy Abraham. He's been playing with Tammy again his whole life and they've got a really good chemistry. Now Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham have been Chelsea's two most impressive players this season. Obviously they're the ones that have got all the headlines, they've got like, the highest ranking on who scored in terms of statistical metrics. They've basically been playing really, really well. Now they know how to play together, they know how to find each other and they know how to make movements. Obviously if you look at the game the other day where Tammy Abraham could have squared that ball to Mason Mount and it would have been a short goal, but I think that's more of a striker that's just got eyes for goal. In terms of movement and chemistry, they've got it nailed down from years of practice together. But what does this mean for Christian Pulisic? Well, I think he doesn't need to worry and Chelsea fans don't need to worry and fans of Christian Pulisic 
don't need to worry. People forget, and this is something Frank Lampard himself always reiterates, he's just as young as all the other kids. He's 21, he's just turned 21. He was 20 when Chelsea bought him. So he's super young, he does need to embed into the new team and the culture and the system and everything. And to be honest, Chelsea do see him as a massive asset. He's a huge money signing, he was very, very impressive. Everyone can see his skill set. It's a really impressive skill set. Pedro, Willian, they're obviously not going to be around for that much longer. He's just signed a fresh deal. He will be a big part of Chelsea. Frank Lampard was given the direct question in his press conference, or one of his press conferences, where they said, so Pulisic's not playing, is he in your plans? And he sort of swatted it away of like, of course he's in my plans. He's in the squad, he's in my plans. So I feel like he will be used, he will be integrated. He's a very talented player, he's very young. Chelsea have aging wingers. Him and hudson Adoy are probably the future of Chelsea in terms of wingers going forward, but probably do expect to see Mason Mount continuing on the left wing a lot of the time, purely because he knows Lampard's football backwards, but Christian Pulisic should feature. Indeed, he's probably one of the players to play in the cup tonight. And moving forward, if he impresses, if he gains better chemistry with the players, understands the football a bit better, you can imagine he'll be a starter moving forwards for Chelsea. Anyway, what do you guys think? What do you think of the Chelsea youth? Do you feel like a lot of different names could be integrated into this squad? Do you think we could see players like Billy Gilmore or Ian Martin? People like that. Get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts and all of that. And Christian Pulisic as well. I'll be down there. I'll be reading your comments. So get down there. If you have enjoyed today's video guys please do like the video and remember subscribe if you are new to the channel and if you want to follow me on social media you are welcome it's at football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram and if you like FIFA 20 and you want to watch me fail at Chelsea uh, career mode go and check out my sister channel Yan plays and you can watch the FIFA 20 series there it's a lot of fun and it's pretty funny other than that guys I'm gonna bounce you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living I'ma walk the walk outline my lines I rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby.